Hello, everybody. This is Ken Raggio. Welcome to another edition of Ken Raggio Live for Thursday night, June the 8th of the year 2022. Thank you for joining me. I hope you'll stay with me for a while. My subject tonight is He Restoreth My Soul. And this is a talk about wholeness and fullness. I hope you'll stay with me for this program tonight. If you're not already following me on YouTube, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Also, be sure you follow me on my other video networks in case we ever lose YouTube. That is, first of all, on Rumble. Follow the link below to Rumble and join my Rumble account there. Also, I'm on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. We're trying to build a good following on these alternate channels in case YouTube ever cuts us off. Also, please follow me on Twitter and on uh, Facebook and now on True Social. I'm trying to focus on building a good following on True Social and on Cloud Hub, MeWe, Gab, and some of these other, everywhere you find me, Instagram, just follow Ken Radjo on any of the networks. If you're on any of the social networks, look and see if I'm there and follow me there, and I'll be posting from time to time on all these networks. We're going to get into the message now today. Thank you again for joining me. We have a good word from the Lord, and it comes actually from the 23rd Psalms, one of the most familiar passages in the entire Bible. David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and he restoreth my soul. And I want to bear down on those four words. I think this is a message everybody needs to hear today. He restores my soul. When God when God restores our soul, what exactly does that mean? Uh I think that you and I can probably relate to the fact that sometimes our soul gets weary and we get to, into a position where we just, for one thing, physically we get exhausted and we need rest for our bodies. But your spirit sometimes can get that same way. You've gone through many trials and tests and hard times and difficulties and things that just weigh your spirit down. And this verse says, God restores my soul. Now, the real definition of, of restoration or restore means to go back to original condition. For instance, if you have an old automobile that once was a beautiful car, most of you old timers, you can think back at times in your life when you bought a new vehicle or you had a car that you really loved, you really enjoyed driving, and uh, maybe you fantasize or entertain the possibility one of these days buying another copy of that old car and restoring it to its original condition. There's a great deal of gratification comes along with that. I know I went with my family here a few months ago to a big air show in Houston and while we were there there was a big display of uh, restored antique automobiles and me being 70 years old I go through and look at all those old automobiles and Pontiacs and, and Buicks and various other cars and, and it just kind of sets you to drool and you think well those were beautiful cars back in the day but when you restore a man's soul that means you put it back to its original condition it looks it looks as good as it did in the beginning how many would like to have your soul restored so that you can walk into a room with your chest held high and your eyes sparkling and strength in your handshake and you're feeling good about God and feeling good about life I'm here to tell you God wants to restore your soul in fact that's God's business is to restore your soul. And I'm going to tell you that the original condition of our soul is what Adam and Eve had back in the Garden of Eden. When God made Adam and Eve in the Garden, they weren't encumbered with the problems of life. They didn't have to fill out income tax forms by April the 15th. They didn't have to balance their bank statements. They, they didn't have to call and settle their debts with any bill collectors. They didn't have any stresses of life. They didn't have a job to go to. They didn't have to punch a clock. They'd have to pay insurance policies that didn't even have to go to the grocery store. Adam and Eve had pure souls. You know that. And their souls were only corrupted when the devil began to lie to them. They began to believe stupid stuff that they shouldn't believe. If we could get our hearts cleansed out, if we could be, if we could be restored to the condition that God really intended for our souls to be, what a glorious, beautiful thing that would be if you could just get your soul restored. Is there anybody listening to me today that would like to have your soul restored? 
You know, there's times when you need to just pull away. When Jesus came on the scene, the crowds, it wasn't long before the miracles and the mighty works that he was doing and the great messages and authoritative messages he was preaching, the crowds began to press around him. It got to the point where everywhere he went, he was being followed by crowds. And he had to go up in the mountains and spend time alone to, re to restore his own soul. You know, God is the God of wholeness. He is the God of fullness. He's the God of being refilled and renewed and revived and re re rejuvenated. God can rejuvenate you. God will rejuvenate you. God will restore your soul. I'm going to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 9 and read you something here. In verse 11... Matthew 9, 11, when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? And everybody knows this story. Uh, those indignant religious Pharisees said Jesus, apparently in their mind, they thought there was something wrong with Jesus eating with common people. He said, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said to them, they that are whole need not a physician but they that are sick think about that when when you're whole just that first phrase there's a sermon in itself they that are whole don't need a physician when you're well you don't go to the doctor when you don't have any problems in your body you don't feel the need to go to the ER or to the hospital you don't need a physician when you're well when you're young and healthy and vibrant you don't go to the doctor you, can, you just carry on. But it's the people that are sick. And so when Jesus was challenged by these hypocritical Pharisees, and they said, you shouldn't be eating with, with publicans and sinners. Jesus said, hey, I didn't come here to people that don't need help. I came to those that do need help. I came to those that need healing, to those that are broken, those who are sick. Does the Bible say Jesus came to seek and to save them that were lost he said i didn't come that you might that you to condemn the world but they come to, that the world might be saved the business of jesus christ is not to send you to hell the business of jesus christ is to restore your soul and make you feel good about god to make you feel good about life to give you the chin up he is the lifter of my head god is the lifter of your head do you believe that let god lift up your head I want to tell you something. God wants to lift up your head right now. You're discouraged maybe. You've been going through a bad time. I mean, we've all been through all this COVID pandemic. It just wore us out. Mass mandates and vaccinations and jobs being shut down. And now we got all this democratic brouhaha. We got high gas prices. We got inflation. We got food shortages, baby food shortages, every kind of thing. I mean, we're living in a stressful world. Didn't the Bible say in the last days there would be perilous times? Sure it did. But I've got to tell you that even in the midst of perilous times, God can restore your soul. Even when the world is pressing down on you like just a heavy weight, even when your problems are overwhelming, when you feel like you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown, when you feel like you're about to get sick from all the trials and tribulations you're going through. God can and God will restore your soul. He said to them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Go learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now compare the word repentance to restoration. The word repent means to return or to go back to your original innocence. When you repent of your sins, you confess the wrong that you've done. You confess all the transgressions that you've committed against God. And you cleanse your soul of your unrighteous heart, of your unrighteous spirit, of your unrighteous deeds. And you're restored even in repentance. Repentance is a part of that restoration. When you purge yourself of all that iniquity that that uh, that you have committed and then the blood of jesus washes you perfectly clean though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as wool though they as, though, as, though they be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be as crimson yet they shall be as wool god wants to clean you up and restore you and bring you back 
to your original condition. And I'm trying to say to you today, He is the restorer of your soul. God wants to restore your soul. I want you to get this in your spirit. It's time to go back to God. There's nobody can do this for you. Social security check is not going to restore your soul. Your paycheck doesn't restore your soul. The approval of a bank loan doesn't always restore your soul. A lawyer can't always restore your soul. Who can do that? Only Jesus can do that. Let me take you to the book of Isaiah chapter 58. When the prophet Isaiah said, is this, of course God was speaking through Isaiah, said, is this the fast that I've chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Let me talk about fasting and prayer for one second. Fasting is the abstaining from food. Fasting literally means not to eat. And we got all these new modern fancy fasts where they say give up artichokes and broccoli and that's a fast or quit using social media for 12 hours. They call that a fast. That's not a fast. The Bible, in the Bible, all through the Bible, fasting means you don't eat. If you fast for a day, that means you don't eat for a day. If you fast for three days, that means you don't eat for three days. If you fast 21 days, that means you don't eat 21 days. All this silliness about, I'm going to give up steaks and just eat. I mean, come on, guys. You're going to give up a steak and eat macaroni and cheese and call that a fast? Don't kid yourself. That's not a fast. But it's a, but it's a day to suppress the flesh. And, and this is the big point. Fasting and prayer is a counterbalancing act. It's when your flesh gets too high and your spirit gets too low. Fasting brings your flesh back down and it lifts your spirit back up. Are you with me? Fasting takes exalted flesh and brings it under subjection. And praying takes a beat down spirit and lifts it up in the presence of God. So fasting and prayer is a counterbalancing effect. It's when you become too carnal and too worldly and too sinful. That you need that fast to crucify your flesh. and But you also need that spiritual activities. You need to be walking in the spirit and doing the things of God. And preoccupying yourself with the things of God. Obeying the gospel and, and doing the good works of men and women of God. And when you do that lifts up your spirit and it's, it puts down that old carnal mind. And that old carnal flesh. That old sinful flesh. And it puts you back in right relationship with God. And so part of that is really what Isaiah is talking about. It's not good enough just to afflict your soul. If all you do is fast and you don't pray, or if you don't do the spiritual works, then you're just going to be a miserable wretch. Go on a big long fast, but don't pray. You know what's going to happen? You're going to come out of that man angry and whipped and defeated and depressed and discouraged and weak and frail. Fasting alone, fasting alone is not the object. There's no, there's no spiritual... Inherent spiritual value in a fast. Fast crucifies your flesh. That's what it does. And you need to learn that. Fasting doesn't all get the job done. Is it to, for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? Or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Obviously the answer is no. Is not this the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness... Now we're getting somewhere. When you got somebody that's oppressed, you help that person be delivered from their oppression. When you see one's in need, you minister to that need. You help them get that need met. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Jesus did all that. The Bible said from the day his ministry was inaugurated there in Capernaum, he went into the synagogue and first thing off, he cast the devil out of a demon-possessed man. And then coming out of the synagogue, the crowds followed him. Somebody said, Peter's mother-in-law's got a fever. He said, let's go heal her. He goes over and walks into Peter's mother-in-law's house, raises her up off the, her sick bed and heals her fever. When people see what he's capable of doing, the whole crowds begin to swarm around. And the Bible said he healed every one of them that day. That's what he does. Listen, he's undoing the band, loosening the bands of wickedness, undoing the heavy burdens, letting the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. That's what Jesus' ministry was. It was a ministry of restoration. Sick folks being healed. Demon-possessed people being set free. People that are under a heavy load, they're having their loads lifted.
That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't forget the gospel means good news, guys. Come on. God wants us to be encouraged. He wants us to be lifted up. He wants us to be full. He wants us to be whole. When you're whole, when you wake up in the morning feeling good and you feel strong, when you're eating well and drinking plenty of water, plenty of good fluids and you're, you got good vitamin balance in your body and everything is going good, you feel like you could run through a troop and leap over a wall and then the devil comes in here and slaps you cross-eyed and knocks the wind out of you and you find yourself laying flat on your back and say, oh my God, I wish I was dead. That's not the mind that God wants you to be in. God wants to deliver you. He wants... Some of you got such heavy burdens on you right now, you think it's the end of the world. You think you're not going to survive. And here I am, a prophecy preacher, telling everybody we're fixing to face the mark of the beast. And we're fixing to go through the great tribulation. But I know what I'm talking about. The man of God that puts his trust, they that know their God, shall be strong and do exploits. Why? Because God gives you wholeness. Come on. You got to hear me. When Moses got to the Red Sea, everybody was panicking. We got Pharaoh coming in behind us. We're fixing to get killed. But that's not what Moses felt. He was waiting on God. And when God said, stretch that rod out, he stretched it out. And God cut a highway through that Red Sea and they walked across on dry ground. You got to have that hopeful expectation that Moses had. Instead of seeing the Red Sea as sure death, you got to look at that Red Sea and say, this is going to be good. God's fixing to deliver me. Even when you hear Pharaoh's chariots coming up behind you, you got to say, I know in whom I believed and I'm persuaded he's able to keep everything I've committed in unto him against that day. When you get the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord activated in your soul, your soul is going to be restored. You need to be restored. Let the spirit of God and the word of God and the faith of God pick your soul up right now in Jesus' name. Let me read on about this. He said, it's not the true fast to deal your bread to the hungry. How many of you feel good when you've given somebody hungry something to eat? Or that you bring the poor that's cast out to your house? Don't you feel good? Don't your spirit feel refreshed when you've done a, good, a kind deed for somebody in need? When you see the naked, that thou cover him. Does it feel good to give some clothes to somebody that needs clothes? And that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. That you help your family when you see your brother, your sister, your children, your grandchildren in need. And you minister to them. That's the good blessings of God that's working in you. That's Jesus said in Luke 6.38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall men heap into your bosoms. If you'll let the blessings of God flow through you, this is a better fast. The better fast is to break the yokes and to minister to the oppressed, to loose the heavy burden, to set the oppressed free. Come on. Be strong in the Lord. Do the works of God. It's like an old water well. When you get that old hand pump on that thing, you know, once you prime that pump, you pour water in it at the beginning, you get that water flowing. But once you get that water flowing, you can just keep on pumping that old pump and it'll pump water all day long. But if you quit pumping it, and that water drains back down in the hole, then you're going to have to prime it all over again. And that's the way it is when you stop giving of the goodness of God that's in you. God wants you to be thankful and grateful for what you have and give it away. He, Jesus said, freely you have received, now freely give. If you have a good report, the Bible said you're made overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. How many of you know that when you tell your testimony, it makes you feel better and it makes other people feel better? When you tell other people what God's done in your life, it renews your soul and it also renews their soul. Jesus Christ restores our souls. He says, when you, when you begin to do this as I have ordained you to do it, then shall thy light... Thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health, get this, thy health shall spring forth speedily. You're going to get healthier when you start doing the spiritual works of God. When you start acting like a real Christian, like a real godly man and woman, when you start acting by faith and by hope and by love and by the virtues of the Holy Spirit, when you start walking the way God wants you to walk, when you start talking the way God wants you to talk, when you start living and acting and doing like God wants you to do, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel strong. 
Your light is going to spring forth speedily. Your health is going to spring forth. And the, thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. The word rearward means thy back guard. Like if you if you got a troop of, of soldiers going down a road and there's a rear guard back here, they're a rear ward, they're protecting you from from a, an attack in the rear guard. And if you're walking in the spirit and doing the works of God every day of your life, God's got a rear ward on you. He's got a rear guard and, and keeps people from st stabbing you in the back. When you're walking in victory, they can't stab you. They can't hurt you. And he said, then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. And thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If you take away from you the midst of the yoke, take away from the midst of thee the yoke, loose these yokes that you see on yourself and others. If you take away from thee the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, all the blaming and stuff that's going on, the speaking vanity, if you stop gossiping and criticizing and condemning and uh, playing the hypocrite, if you'll stop the putting forth of your finger and the speaking vanity, and if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, I got, I got to deal with that word afflicted for a second. Do you know when we talk about great tribulation out of Matthew 24 and Luke 20, the same passage in the book of Mark doesn't use the word tribulation. It uses the word affliction. What you get out of that is that tribulation and affliction are synonymous. When he talks about us going through the great tribulation, he's saying we're going through great affliction. And this Bible is telling us that we can deal with affliction. He said, if you will... Uh, Satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in the obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. When we look at those who are afflicted and minister to them, then we're going to be afflict we're going to be ministered to in our afflictions. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul. Come on. Satisfy thy soul in drought. Do you know there's going to be drought? Do you know there's going to be famine in the land? Do you know there's going to be food shortages? you know the economy's collapsing? you know we're on the way to a depression if, or, or a recession? We're fixing to see an economic downturn like we've not seen in our lifetimes. But in the days of our affliction, God says he's going to satisfy our soul in drought. And he's going to make fat our bones. And we will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. When you get into the vein of walking in the Spirit, walking in the Word of God, walking in the faith of God, and the hope of God, and the confidence and comfort of the Holy Ghost, you're going to see victories even in your most difficult times. Please hear what I'm telling you today. He is the restorer of my soul. I'm talking about wholeness. I'm talking about spiritual fullness. You think Daniel slept in the middle of that lion's den? He wasn't worried about those lions. God sent peace in his soul. Those boys in that furnace, they didn't even feel the heat. When they came out of that furnace, they didn't smell like smoke because God ministered to them in their fiery furnace and their hard trial. And he said, the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones and you will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And, listen further, they that be of thee, the people that are ministered to by you, the people that you encourage, the people that you minister to, and the people that come to the kingdom because of your efforts, they that be of thee shall build the old places. I'm talking about a revival of your spirit. I'm talking about a revival of your family. I'm talking about a revival of your church. If you will get in this spirit walk, get out of this old this old thinking of crucifying yourself all the time and walk in the spirit. It's, you've got to do both. You've got to crucify your carnality and your worldlessness. You've got to crucify your doubt. You've got to crucify your unbelief. You've got to crucify your fear and anxiety and your panic. And you've got to walk in the spirit. Kill that old nature and lift up that new nature. And when you do, the people that are being ministered to you are going to help restore your whole world that you live in. They shall build the old ways places, and thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach. What does that mean? You ever had a broken down fence, and your pets got out, and the varmints got in? 
You go out and repair that breach. You go put that fence back in order, and you're back to life as normal. And the Bible says when you start walking with a restored spirit, with a full spirit, with a, with a whole spirit, you're going to be repairing breaches. You're going to be fixing fences for other people. You're going to be helping them get their lives back in order. You will be called the repairer, the restorer. You will be the repairer of the breach and what he said. And he said, the restorer of paths. I love that word, restorer. You will be the restorer of paths to walk in. People that follow you will see which way to go. It's like John the Baptist. He said uh, the Lord told him to prepare the way of the Lord. And that's what John the Baptist did. He preached the gospel and he prepared the way of the Lord. He made their. He was making Christ's path straight. And that's what he said about all the saints that do the will of God. We will be called the restorer of paths to walk in. I want to do that. By the will of God as a minister of the gospel, I want to repair the breaches in your life by the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord that works through me. I want to restore the paths that you walk in. That's the ministry. That's the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry of the church. That's the ministry of the saints of God is to repair breaches and restore paths to walk in. Jesus is the restorer of your soul. You got to get this message. If you're in need right now, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, be whole. In the name of Jesus, be well. How I many do you know that when Jesus came in, the Bible said, everywhere when he was doing good, he spoke to those people that had their problems. He cast out their devils. He told that withered arm to stretch forth. He told that blind to go wash in the pool of Bethesda. He told those lepers, go show yourself to the priest. He was deliverer. He was a restorer. Peter said to that man on the temple mount, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And that man got up and walked. Jesus said to that man, they let down through the roof. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And then when they rejected to that, he said that the, that the, that the world may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say to thee, rise up and walk. And he got up and walked. Jesus is the restorer. I want God to restore you today. First of all, I want him to restore your spirit. I want him to restore your body. I speak healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak a spiritual revival to you in the name of Jesus. I speak encouragement. I speak, I speak faith to you and hope and the love of God and encouragement and strength. I've told the story several, several times over the years, but in 2014, I was in Jerusalem on a, on a group tour, and uh, one night after dinner, we didn't have anything on the schedule to do. It's probably 7, 7.30 at night, and I decided I was, my hotel was about 10 blocks from the old city of Jerusalem. I decided I would go out and walk by myself down to the old city and go down through the Jaffa Gate and down the... David Street and then through the Jewish Quarter and down to the uh, Western Wall Plaza where people pray at the Wailing Wall. I said, I want to go pray. So by myself, I walked for, long, for quite a while to get down there. And I, I, I walked up to that prayer wall and I laid my hands on that wall like so many millions of people have done over the years. And I began to call on God and I began to pray about all the things that were burdening my soul that day. I called out the names of so many people that I love and care for and prayed. I prayed in the spirit. I prayed in tongues. I, I wept even at times as I was praying. And I felt like I really did touch God at that holy place. And, and the reason they call it a holy place is because it's the closest place you can pray now to where Solomon's temple, the holy temple once sat. But I prayed until I finally felt a release to, to go back to my room. And so probably 1030 that night, I got back to my room after walking for several hours. And, and I sat down on the edge of my bed. And I began to, I began to uh, reach up to turn the lamp off before I laid down. And when I did that, I heard a voice inside my head. It said, I have made you strong. God said to me, sitting on the edge of my bed in a hotel in Jerusalem, I have made you strong. I just shuddered. I did. It was like I knew that was God. It wasn't my imagination. I had I had no forethought of it. He just said to me, audibly inside my head, "I have made you strong," and I, I contemplated that 
all these years, it's been eight years ago now, I never forget that statement. You know, at first I was saying, come on, keep talking, but, he, but that's all he said. But when God makes you strong, it's not natural strength. You know, we, we talk about Samson being a strong man back in his day. But you have to understand, Samson's strength was not physical, muscular strength. It was divine strength. Because as long as Samson held his consecration and his relationship to God, as long as his spiritual condition was whole, as long as his spiritual condition was full, he was strong. But when he compromised himself and sinned with Delilah, then the Bible said he woke up and he wished not that the glory of the Lord had departed. And he went out to do battle and he got hurt. They, they captured him. They put out his eyes. They put him slaving at a, at a grist mill. He lost all of his strength. His muscles did not save him. His brute force did not save him. Samson's strength was not. And that's what the prophet Zechariah said. It's not by might. But it's, and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You don't move mountains by physical brute force. You move them by the hand of God. And I'm saying to you today, your strength is not your physical strength. Your strength is not your money. Your strength is not your credit rating. Your strength is not your job. Your strength is not your family relationships. Your strength is in the Lord. And if you don't have the strength of God, you don't have strength. But you can have it if you want it. God wants to restore your soul. He wants to make you whole. And I say to you today, Jesus Christ maketh you whole. Hallelujah. And that's my message to you today. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. I hope it changes your life. If you're discouraged, quit being discouraged. If you feel like killing yourself, quit feeling like killing yourself. If you feel like quitting, don't quit. It's always too soon to quit. The next victory, you don't know how close you are to the next victory. It may be one step beyond your quitting. You failed it all and you lost it all. Don't do that. Hold on to Jesus and he will carry you through. In the name of Jesus, be encouraged today. Thank you for listening to me today. Please go to my website at KenRaggio.com. Visit KenRaggio.com. You're going to see thousands and thousands of pages of Bible articles on every subject you can think of just about. All through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And while you're on my website, there's a form there to fill out and get on my mailing list. Please put, give me your name and address so that I can send you one, one email a day. It's going to have four mini Bible studies in it. You'll get an email a day. It's got four little Bible studies. Once a week, you're going to get a sermon of the week. I've put tens of thousands, probably over 100,000 people through a whole series of probably about four years of Bible studies. You'll enjoy these Bible lessons, and you'll be on my list. If we ever get shut down off of Facebook or YouTube or whatever, I'll be able to reach you by email if we come to that, ever come to that point. Also, please go to Amazon.com. Check out all my books here. Uh, nine books here, the two big books. Daily Bible Companions, uh, Old Testament Lessons and New Testament Lessons. One, every, every chapter of the Bible, there's lessons from every chapter of the Bible. And it'll help you as you read your Bible. It helps explain a lot of the hard sayings. And it's, it's an amazing, it's got accolades, five-star reviews for many years now. You'll love these books, the Daily Bible Companions. This, book, this big book here, 726 pages called The Daniel Prophecies, God's Plan for the Last Days. This is one of the most important prophecy handbook you're ever going to find anywhere on earth you need this book the daniel prophecies another book called praying on purpose praying for results how men prevail with god would you like to be able to prevail with god in your praying this book will help you with that my personal story long winding road is there also the greatest doctrines of the bible take a look at that look at all these books on amazon you can get all nine books of those uh on amazon individually or if you want the whole set and you have a um, united states address I can send you the entire set of books for $125, but you have to follow the link below. You don't get that discount through Amazon. You have to go through the link in the description below this video. Also, if you're able to help me out, uh, send a gift to Ken Raggio through one of the links below. The link, the donation link there can uh, hook you up either to PayPal. There's a cash out opportunity there, or you can just send it by snail mail if that's what you want to do. And I appreciate your support. May the Lord bless you. all of you who have supported me down through the years. And I believe God's going to bless you. Many of have already said that God has blessed and for it and i pray that you will be blessed as you help me continue this ministry even as we approach the great tribulation also please share these videos 
and all this stuff that you've been hearing today. Share it with your friends. Pass it around on Facebook and Twitter and all your social networks. And may the Lord bless you. And I'll see you next time. God bless you. Good night. Thank you.